Black Arbor League, and today we're going to take a look at Feraligator and Gallade in the Great League, and the buff they received with Shadow Claw and Psycho Cut. Feraligator is a pure water type Pokemon that did receive the Community Day move of Hydro Cannon, but it struggles as a Glass Cannon with its move set. Although Waterfall is a hard-hitting fast move, Ice Fang and Water Gun did not allow it to charge quickly. Now with Shadow Claw, energy gain is incredible. Gallade, on the other hand, is a fighting psychic type Pokemon that with Confusion deals heavy damage, charges decent, but it cannot take a hit due to its bulk. So like and subscribe and turn notifications on, and let's take a look at Shadow Claw for Alligator and Psycho Cut Gallade in the Great League. Taking a look at the fast moves on PV Poke, we see Shadow Claw is an instant upgrade. We do sacrifice half as much damage, but we can see that it gains the same amount of energy, taking less time having a 2 turn fast move versus a 3 turn fast move. Looking at it in depth, we see that it's 5 fast moves to Hydro Cannon which is great, but we get there in 16 turns or 8 seconds. As comparison for Shadow Claw, we still get there in 5 fast moves, but it takes 11 turns and 5.5 seconds which is much quicker. I also think the coverage makes sense. Ice Fang is pretty good for grass and flyer matchups, but in terms of charge moves, we have similar coverage with Crunch and Ice Beam. And that's what's great about Feraligator, he's very versatile. Water is a strong neutral type, and he still hits Ghost, Grass, Dragons, and other waters for either neutral or super effective damage, even overcoming its own weaknesses. Like the Altari here, connecting with the Ice Beam, and we have a Mud Boy in the back. Now, with Gallade here, we have to get to three Leaf Blades versus the Marsh Top. We have to shield these up, because Gallade is absolutely glassy. Plus, we are the Shadow, so we are the glassiest of the glass. Throwing a leaf blade here, getting the shield, because this will be four times effective to Marsh Tomp, getting the first shield, and I'm not sure if we're getting out paste here, but I know that the Marsh Tomp will have to get two, three mud bombs, one for our shield, one for the KO, and one for our for alligator. We get to the next leaf blade here, we will be getting the shield, but I don't know if we win CMP on the next leaf blade. Do we make it? Yes, we do, and Gallade will be closing for us. Psycho Cut, proving to be a very worthy fast move as it charges extremely quickly, taking this win. Now, Gallade is also a glass cannon with similar struggles. Confusion is a four-turn fast move, dealing heavy damage, gaining 12 energy, while Psycho Cut is a two-turn low damage fast move, still gaining nine energy. Leaf Blade only took three fast moves to get to, but a duration of 13 turns or 6.5 seconds, whereas Psycho Cut takes four fast moves, but we get to it in nine turns or 4.5 seconds. Very similar to Cresselia, but Gallade cannot take a hit, it is very glassy, so we have to save shields for Gallade. A head on energy is key for this team. So up against an Azumarill here, getting into the commentary, we did get a shield and the defense drop with that Zap Cannon, beating with the Rock Slide, and we're able to get to the next one, and hopefully, despite Azu's bulk, we can take this out and still remain with a shield. Yes, we do, and Probal Pass was able to keep a shield in this match. A Scrafty comes out, and they respond with a Venusaur, but that's not going to matter because they are shieldless. This Ice Beam will connect with the Venusaur. Will it KO? Yes, it will, and again, for Alligator overcoming its weakness. Getting into the next match here, Probal Pass up against Annihilate, a very negative matchup for us, but we don't have a very good response to this, so I'm going to try to come in with this effective Shadow Claws, and it's answered with a Lick of Tongue. They do have access to Power Whip, so this is a negative matchup for, for Alligator, plus we are doing double resisted non-stab Shadow Claw damage. It's all based on energy management here, so I will shield this up, try to get another Hydro Cannon off, and I want this Lick of Tongue in a health range that the Probal Pass can handle. The Power Whips are still neutral, but that Hydro Cannon connects, and at this point, I'm thinking we might actually be able to farm this down. So I'm going to shield up this next Body Slam, hope that they don't make it and that they are low enough. Can Shadow for Alligator double resist non-stab Shadow Claw Lick of Tongue down? Yes, it can! For Alligator coming out with a ton of energy here, firing off a Hydro Cannon for the whatever comes in. We see a mirror for alligator come in and we are able to get to the next one and get the next shield as their for alligator is also glassy. Also getting their shield, but we are down two shields, so this is not looking that great for Probal Pass or Glade. We do have Leaf Blade, but they are absolutely loaded on energy. Try to get a little bit of energy on Glade there, but this is not looking good. This Hydro Cannon will connect with us. Does it KO? It does not. Probal Pass is able to tank one, but there's still the Annihilate that's healthy, so we concede. 
because of the lag, I was not able to hear. So we are just going to have to suffer, watch Galay go down to a shadow ball, and take that loss. However, we try to recover in the next match with a Salazzle. Very spicy matchup. Now these incinerates, look at the damage it is doing. Salazzle, another glass cannon. On the bright side, we don't have to worry about these poison fangs. So I'm just going to go straight for the super effective rock slide and see if we get a shield or a switch. Salazzle is very glassy. Rock slide does connect. And the opponent decides to bring in Licky Licky. Now they don't have access to Power Whip here, but we... Brought in our double resisted non-stab Shadow Clar, but we get to the Hydro Cannon. That's a lot of damage on a Licky Licky, not as bulky as Lickitung. So we are going to just let this go through. Whatever it is, they reveal that they have Shadow Ball, and we get a couple licks off. So I think Probo Pass can come in and handle this. Shadow Balls still hurt, but at least they don't have Earthquake or Power Whip. We do get to the rock side here, so if they want to preserve this Licky, they will have to shield, which they do. I think I might shield in return, but they retreat and come in with Dragonair. Dragonair, also not the tankiest Pokemon around this rock side, will not KO, but we'll throw it some chip and dip, and they shield for whatever reason, and now two, shadow, two shielded Shadow Glade is going on a tear. Shadow Glade with any kind of energy or shield advantage will be an absolute monster. We just have to get to the back-to-back -back moves here versus the Licky Licky. We don't want to throw close combat right away because it will lower our defense and we're already getting torn to shreds by these Dragon Breaths, but we make it. The first close combat connects, does KO the Dragonair, and we can connect with the Licky Licky. We just could have gone straight Leaf Blade, but I wanted the guaranteed KO. Gallade, close and strong, again charging quickly. Hopping into the next match here, one that could go either way. We have to see what their fast move is, and it is Ice Shard, so at least we resist the fast moves, but the Surfs will hit us for super effective damage. Purple Pass is relatively bulky, so we do tank one, but we will have to shield the next one, building up a little bit of extra energy, trying to bait that we do have the Zap Cannon, but this Roxley will still hit for super effective damage, and they let it go through, so we throw one more and catch the Surf on the Feraligator. They were throwing on fours, so this will be the resisted surf. Trying to get ahead on energy with Feraligator, but a nine tails Alolan comes in. And it is on charm. It would be a better match if it was on Powder Snow. However, we do get a shield with the Hydro Cannon. Can we make it to the next run? We are not able to. So at least we can still come back in, realign it with the Probo Pass as we resist these charms with the Steel type. We do get to that rock side, which will be super effective up against the ice. And we get the second shield. Now, Probo Pass here, we are in a low health range. I know we would have been able to take it, but I didn't want to take as much damage and get farmed down or sniped. So we are able to make it to the next rock slide, and this will be taking care of the Alolan Ninetales, getting rid of it out of Gallade's way. We just have to see what the opponent has in the back, desperately switching into Gallade, and it's a Toxapex. Now, Toxapex is relatively bulky as well, so we're not taking these poison jabs very well either, and it will require three leaf blades plus some psycho cuts to get there. So we just have to save uh, this Gallade here, and hopefully we can make it to three. No shield, so this is getting really dangerous. We just have to hope that we can get Toxapex into a farm down range for Probal Pass. The Leaf Blade does not quite KO, and neither do these Psycho Cuts, and we should have thrown right away, but Toxapex making a move at very low health. Perfectly fine with me. The Super Effective Spark takes it out. The Lapras is not at a move, and two Sparks take it out. So taking that 4-1 in the first set, these new moves are absolutely making a difference in these Pokemon. Going to do another set with these fantastic upgrades that we've got. Doing well so far. Our next lead is going to be a Lantern. So it's kind of tricky because it core breaks Probal Pass and Feraligator. But the opponent surrenders. It's probably lag or core broken in the back. Up against a real match here, we have an Azumarill lead. So we're going to play it out the same way. Go for that super effective Zap Cannon and hope for the debuff. The opponent here threw kind of early on five, so it is just going to be an Ice Beam. But as you can see here, if you are the Azu in this match and you're stuck with Ice Beam play rough, it's probably more energy efficient to go Ice Beam. 
Purple Pass. Going to get to that Zap Cannon, hoping for a shield and a debuff. We get the shield, but no debuff, so we aggressively swap. Uh-oh. And we are encountered with a Raichu, and it is not an Alolan one, so these Shadow Claws are not super effective. On the bright side, we get to that Hydro Cannon much quicker than we do with Waterfall. Open for that next one, and we do. Feraligator does not care about weakness. Taking care of that Raichu, taking back Switch with two shields still. The Azumarill comes back in, and we are happy to let this go. We can come back in with either or, but probably the Gallade, because Gallade ahead on energy with two shields can take care of almost anything. So we're going to over farm slightly, throw on good timing, and go for this Leaf Blade. Shadow Gallade, massive attack stat, takes out the Azu despite the bulkiness, and we have to see what's in the back. Unfortunately, it looks like the opponent surrendered here because there's nothing that they could do as an Umbreon comes in. So we're going to go for some science here for a Shadow Gallade. Does a close combat KO an Umbreon. Gallade posing for the thumbnail. Getting ready to fire off that close combat. It does not. But we still get that screenshot because that's still an impressive amount of damage coming from a Shadow Gallade. Even though we're glass cannon, it hits like a truck. So we're just going to get rid of this Umbreon with the Leaf Blade. Because these Psycho Cuts are doing nothing. So Gallade closing strong for us. Up against our next match, it's kind of tricky. We have a Superior. So Superior kind of core breaks this as well. Because of Feraligator and Gallade, again, cannot take a hit. And we're stuck with Leaf Blade. And we don't want to debuff ourselves. But that Frenzy Plant really hurts. Because we are a Walmart Bastiodon. We don't have near as much bulk. But on the bright side we can get out to these Rock Slides. And we get a Shield. The Rock Slides are still doing a solid amount of chip damage. But they're not going to KO Superior. Superior is very bulky. As you can see. So in my opinion we shouldn't. The opponent should not have Shield that first Rock Slide. I guess they were predicting something else. But they actually throw Aerial Ace. So I'm going to decide to shield this up. Because I think I can get to one more Rock Slide. And have the Superior in a health range that is more manageable. So we do get to the Rock Slide. This will not be KOing Superior. He is still pretty bulky. But we come in with Feraligator quickly. And snipe with a Shadow Claw. So now the grass is taken care of. What can Feraligator do to whatever is in the back? I'm predicting probably a water to cover that grass weakness. And it's a Skarmory. So usually Feraligator loses this. But with shield advantage or energy advantage, it's more positive. These steel wings are resisted up against Feraligator's water type. But we will severely outpace them with these shadow claws to the hydro cannon. The waterfalls probably still would have done a solid amount of damage. For Alligator, able to farm down, and there is just a Mud Boy in the back. So, shields are down, but we're massively ahead on energy. Get an issue with that first Hydro Cannon, Storm one for later. But we outpace the Whiz Cash as well. Gallade will be closing this four times effective Leaf Blade onto the Mud Boy, and we take that win. Hopping into the next match, here we're met with a Dugong. This could go either way because of their draw one, but they retreat into a Lickitung. I'm perfectly okay staying here. We can handle Dugong with our other two Pokemon in the back. The Lickitung kind of outpaces us here, and we're not as bulky as a Bastiodon, so this Power Whip still does kind of hurt. So we might need to shield the second one unless we get this debuff. So I'm going to play this out the same way as the Azu, go for the Zap Cannon. We don't get a shield, but we get the Attack Drop, so we will be able to survive this next Power Whip. So I'm going to let this go through, maybe even farm, try to farm down or get to another Rock Slide, but they actually go Body Slam. So I'm going to build up as much energy as I dare, and then they threw, still trying to call this Power Whip. It is a Power Whip. We do survive. And the Dugong comes back in. We're not able to get as many Rock Slides off as we'd hoped. So we are going to go in under this Ice Shard. But at least we get a Shield. We can come back in with the Feraligator. And again, we might be uh, wanting Crunch. But we are fine with the coverage. They actually go Icy Wind this time. And I'm thinking I'm just going to build up as much energy as I can. And throw these Hydro Cannons off before they get to the Drill Run. So this one Hydro Cannon still doing a solid amount of chip damage to the Dugong. I'm going to shield this up, preparing for the Drill Run. 
but they actually go icy wind again which tells me that they have water pulse so i'm just going to keep firing as many hydro cannons off as i can i know our attack has been dropped twice but this next one with the shadow claw damage might actually be able to ko this would be a much more miserable match if we did have waterfall doing resisted damage but we do ko the dugong and a shadow glade or a normal glade comes in so this mirror we're looking pretty good because we all we need to do is shield up one of their leaf blades fire two of ours off and they still need one more fur for alligator we just have to see if the shadow damage from this range kills the glade the shielded up first one and the second one coming through so shadow glade will we be able to ko the normal one we are not now the time of truth does their leaf blade ko us from this range we survive as well, but we get sniped with the lick of tongue. On the bright side, we come in with Feraligator. They're not out of move. We double resist non-stab Shadow Claw down the lick of tongue and have a Hydro Cannon ready for the Glade coming back in. So Feraligator, close and strong for us. Both these fast moves proving their worth in these sets. So we're taking that win streak as well, getting that 5-0 for that set. Feraligator and Gallade in the Great League. Pokemon that were more common in smaller metas and niche cups now making huge steps into the mainstream meta. To have hard hitting fast moves is great, but both these Pokemon do much better in the energy management game. Getting to charge moves quicker, threatening shields, and getting to those charge moves as soon as possible definitely benefits both these Pokemon. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn notifications on. It really helps me out, keeps me in the algorithm, and I appreciate it. There will be much more Pokemon Go content in the future. And don't forget to check out the Discord, where we can stream and help you with your PvP skills, or test out new teams, help each other raid, or just hang out in a friendly, like-minded community. So thank you again, everyone, so much for watching. I've been Arbor Andy, and I'll see you buds in the next one.